Hello and welcome to the uh, engine compartment of my 1999 Volkswagen Beetle GLS. Um, technical electronic oddity for you today. Um, those of you who have these cars probably know all about this. Um, I've known about it for a long time, but uh, it's interesting to play around with sometimes. This being a 99 before really the uh, days of the fly-by-wire throttle started to come in. This car has a traditional throttle cable. Uh, however, it's, it also has an electronic throttle control module, which uh, serves to partially actuate the throttle for cruise control and uh, a couple other things, uh, like your idle air control and uh, also your, your, for your transmission for your ref matching on downshifts, for example. Um, so I don't know if you can see it here, but the connector for the throttle control module is right here where my finger's tapping. And some odd things start to happen if you disconnect it. I had it fail once, so I learned all about this then, inadvertently, but uh, yeah, you disconnect that thing, and all of a sudden the engine starts to run like an absolute pig. In fact, uh, it hasn't been started today. I'll take you inside. And uh, yeah, you can see our temperature is 43 Fahrenheit on the coolant right now. This thing has not been started today. And uh, down at the bottom, the TP percentage that you see, that's now reading 0.0, .0 meaning that it's got no data from the throttle control module. I'm now at full throttle, and you can see no change on the numbers. Back to uh, the pedal, uh, off the pedal, and uh, still no numbers. So obviously, running the engine like this, it's possible, but uh, some weird things start to happen. One, it won't... Um, it will stall basically on startup. You have to you have to be on the throttle in order to keep the engine running. And of course, when it's cold like this, you don't want to give it too many revs because there's no oil flowing around yet, and it's just all in all a bad situation. Uh, number two, when you're driving the car, you don't get full revs on the motor anymore, uh, and the, the gearbox won't shift properly. Upshifts are generally okay. You have to lift on the upshifts. The downshifts, though, they're completely erratic. Uh, and there's no rev match whatsoever on them, so it's really easy to, at very least, uh, wreck <laughs> an individual gear, if not blow the torque converter. But, um, yeah, it's an absolute pig to drive like this. Like I said, you don't get full revs. You can manually select gears um, with the, uh, you know, with the transmission one, two, three, so on, but um, effectively the car becomes like trying to drive a manual without the clutch. And, of course, that it will still try to change gear on you at any given time. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it becomes an absolute pig to drive, and uh, actually, it's not good for the car in general. But, uh, yeah, I'll give you a sense of just how badly this thing runs, and in case you're experiencing a problem like this, uh, again, look for the throttle control module and uh, see what's going on with that. So uh, I'll start the engine up, uh, give you a view of the exhaust pipe, and I'm actually interested to see that for myself because I've never run it. I've never had a look at the exhaust like that, so I'm interested to see if it smokes or whatever.
All right, so that was a run up to uh, 108 Fahrenheit on the uh, coolant temp. So uh, you can see what it does. You get really, really crummy throttle response, and uh, I had to give it quite a bit of throttle just to get the engine to kick over. It, it barked when it started I hit about 3,000 RPM. <laughs> that's not what you want. Um, but uh, anyway, that's what it does. The car is drivable in that condition, but like I said, it drives like an absolute pig, and uh, it can even stall in some cases so i mean it, typically what i do in a case like that is uh i'll even you know i'll play with the gearbox and actually run through gears like you would in the manual um as much as you can obviously lifting on the upshift and trying to rev match on the downshifts it requires that you left foot brake which is a little scary in an automatic <laughs> for some people and then of course if you come to a stop neutral so uh yeah that's some interesting stuff so again, if you have a failure like this on your Volkswagen, but uh, probably a lot of cars would react this way if you have a throttle cable anyway. If you have a throttle control module failure on a strictly fly-by-wire car, you're probably not going to be able to even start the engine. But yeah, if you get a failure like this on a Volkswagen, um, really get it to uh, somebody who can fix it as quickly as possible. In this case, I know why mine has failed, because I physically unplugged the umbilical. So, uh, in my case, it's as simple as going back in here, lining it up, and sticking it back on. And in order to recalibrate this thing... Now, if you go on a bunch of forums, or particularly if you go to the dealer, they're going to tell you, Oh, you need to bring it into the dealer and get uh, your... Uh, Engine control module reset. Uh, yeah, it's that's total BS. What you do is uh, you reconnect the uh, the umbilical as I showed you just there, and of course this applies also if you've replaced your throttle control module. Now you see your reading on the TP percentage. Now we're at 3.5. This is the nominal throttle off, engine off condition. And what you do is you slowly ramp up the pedal. And you'll see this value increase. There you go. So you slowly bring the pedal down to full throttle. And then on your automatic uh, transmission version, you have a plunger that's on the bottom of the uh, throttle travel to uh, tell the gearbox to downshift. So you then depress that. Now you get 77.3. Yep, there you go. And now you slowly ramp off the throttle until you're completely off the pedal and it displays 3.5 again like so. Then what you do is you give it a start. And you'll see that everything is running normally again. So yeah, you don't have to reset your uh, engine management and none of that hocus pocus $500 BS from the dealer. The only other thing that this does I'll just shut her down real quick. The only other thing that this does for you is uh, you'll you'll get uh, an ETC associated with the mill. So of course I have to wait for my connection to reset. But anyway, here you go. Read codes. You're gonna get. Manufacturer specific, you're going to get an 1128, which is your long term fuel uh, trim being too lean. And in this case, I'm also going to, going to get a 0172, which is your uh, fuel being too rich. So obviously, this is your fuel mixture. And then you're going to get a 1544, which is your throttle actuation potentiometer signal too high. And then a 0121, throttle pedal position sensor switch A, circuit range performance. So Obviously, all of this is associated with the throttle control module being non-functional. In this case, you have to uh, clear these codes out yourself. So once that's done, obviously, all of your monitors are going to reset. So drive the car for whatever your reset interval is. On this car, it's approximately 10 miles. And then all of these incompletes will go to OK or ready status, depending on how your scan tool displays them. But uh, anyway, yeah, that's about it. That's my uh, technical fun for the day. I uh, just thought that might be interesting and of some use for people with Volkswagens with unruly 
throttle response. So, yeah.